While headlines screamed about TikTok bans and flashy sanctions, something far more consequential was happening quietly, deliberately, and away from Western eyes, not in Silicon Valley or Seoul, but deep in a clean room in Shenzhen. Huawei, once declared dead by Western analysts, has re-emerged with a homegrown chip that's shaking the very foundation of the global tech order. It's not just a comeback. It's a signal, a warning, that the old rules of technological power may no longer apply. This isn't about one company or one phone. It's about a geopolitical shift, a reshaping of global influence, all starting from inside a silicon wafer. If you are already intrigued by what this means for the global economy, tech independence, or even your own investment portfolio, go ahead and hit like and share this video. This story is flying under the radar and more people need to see what's really happening behind the headlines. Back in 2019, the United States launched what it hoped would be a final blow a full-spectrum tech decapitation of Huawei. Banned from working with TSMC, cut off from Google services, denied access to ARM architecture. It wasn't just punishment. It was meant to end Huawei's role in the global tech race. And for a while it seemed to work. Smartphone sales cratered. Western media wrote eulogies. Huawei was on live support. But beneath the wreckage, something extraordinary was happening. Behind firewalls and factory gates, Huawei engineer quietly shifted from optimization to reinvention. Where once they relied on global supply chains, they began building an entirely domestic alternative. Fast forward to today and the Kirin 9000S emerges. Built in China, designed in-house, no access to extreme EUV machines. No ARM licensing, no American IP. Yet here it is, a functioning 7 nanometer chip, once thought impossible without a UV, created using only deep ultraviolet DUV tools. Think about that. It's like performing heart surgery with kitchen tools and still saving the patient. Its performance roughly on par with Apple's A13 or A14 Bionic. Not cutting edge by 2025 standards, but more than capable of powering flagship smartphones, running AI models and handling 5G data. This chip isn't about being the best, it's about being independent. Many Western analysts scoffed. It's inefficient, they said. It's outdated but they are missing the forest for the trees. This wasn't built to beat Apple. It was built to exist without Apple, Qualcomm or TSMC. That's the true innovation. Huawei is no longer just competing, it's escaping. When the US tried to lock the gate on China's chip ambitions, Huawei quietly built a tunnel underneath. And now they have shown the world that you can go around the embargo and still come out with a functioning competitive chip. That's not just a technical feat, it's a geopolitical shockwave. Let's pause for a second. Do you think sanctions like this still work in today's globalized world or have they become fuel for self-reliance? Drop a comment. I want to know what you think about this silent revolution and its implications for the global balance of power. When the current chip appeared, Washington didn't cheer. It panicked. Lawmakers demanded investigations. Analysts scrambled to understand how this could have been happened under one of the toughest sanctions regimes ever imposed. The answer was simple but uncomfortable. The political will and industrial policy of Beijing had been grossly underestimated. The West's strategy was always based on the assumption that China couldn't build what it couldn't buy. That assumption is now shattered. 
And it's not just Huawei. SMIC, China's leading chip maker, is scaling up fast. Its fab capacity surged 30% in just one year. Over $140 billion was poured into domestic chip development in 2024 alone. That number is projected to hit $200 billion by 2026. If current trend continues, we could see the global semiconductor industry is split into two parallel civilizations. One built around TSMC, NVIDIA, Intel and Western standards, the other led by SMIC, Huawei and an increasingly self-sufficient Chinese supply chain. The old model designed in California, built in Taiwan, assembled in Korea and sailed to China is beginning to bleed. And here is the kicker, Huawei no longer needs TSMC or Qualcomm or even permission. That invisible fence around high-tech IP, it just got a giant hole in it. This isn't just about the smartphones anymore. It's about server infrastructure, AI, satellites, surveillance, and military-grade computing. Chips are the bloodstream of modern power, and China just proved it can make its own transfusions under pressure, under sanctions, and under the radar. Companies like Apple, Qualcomm, and Nvidia now face an uncomfortable truth. China may no longer be a customer, it may become a competitor. And as China accelerates, others will be forced to either adapt or accept diminished influence in a world that's no longer single-threaded through Silicon Valley. We are watching the rewiring of global technology. This isn't about interdependence anymore, it's about sovereignty. Huawei didn't just bounce back, it opened a door, and now the world must choose which side of that door it wants to stand on. For investors, policymakers, and engineers alike, this isn't a short-term challenge. It's a long-term reality. Supply chains, alliances, even innovation itself, everything is shifting. Not with a bank, but with a chip. Huawei's chip comeback isn't just the footnote in the trade war. It's the first page of a new chapter, a chapter written in silicon and sovereignty. We are no longer asking whether China can make advanced chips. The question now is how fast can they scale and who will be left behind? Thanks for watching. If you found this valuable, Give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the global tech race. The revolution is already here. The question is, are we paying attention?